Salutations, Dufos. This is your fabulous leader, the Queen of Shade, coming to you with a very special presentation. I am full speed ahead, recovering from COVID, but feeling better and getting back into the swing of things with my work. And a part of my work is getting to talk to amazing people who are their trendsetters, they're trailblazers, they're pioneers, they're mavericks, they're famous, they're gorgeous, they're lovely, and they're worldwide. Having said that, I have someone that you need to meet. So I'm going to do a little introduction because I was looking at uh, Wikipedia. I can't wait to hear your introduction. <laughs> here, it, here it goes. Here it goes. Vincent McDoom. Born on October 27th, we're not going to say the year, in St. Lucia, is a British model. St. Lucia, yes. Yep. British model, fashion designer, television host and presenter, jet setter, yeah. jet setter media personality, and socialite. His participation in a reality broadcast on TF1, La Ferme Celebrities, gave him- Celebrity Farm. <laughs> yes, they said it differently. Gave him notoriety in France starting in 2004. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my friend, someone who I love, who is quite famous and going to drop some jewels for us today, Mr. Vincent McDoom. <laughs> Hi, Hi nice. I know, I was running late, I was running late, I'm so That fine. was cute, that was a lovely introduction. Listen, I had to get, I had to do Proud it, I had, you. To, I had to get it right, I had to get it right for you, I had to get it oh, right. Oh, you did, you did, yes. you did. You How did a very are, good job. I'm very proud thank of you. you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> listen, listen, I try. I try. I try. And, and my thing is, I'm not going to be around here talking to all these people all over the world and not and get to my friend and then do you bad. No, no, no. I'm not doing that. You should see the thumbnail oh, I put out too for the video. What an honor. It's such an honor. Really, you know. It's been such a while. Happy New Year. I you know. know. Have a blessed, healthy, and prosperous New Year because this is the, this is the first time that I'm speaking to you for the year, so. Oh my oh, God, you're right, it best. is. Oh my God, you're right, it is. We met in 2018. Ooh, John. Ooh, that child. seemed like a long way. That right? So that, was pre, away, that was you know? pre, that was pre everything. That was, yeah, because don't forget, we are talking about a new beginning. So, you know, there's almost two and a half years in between where nothing was going on, but the rents, finding the money for the rents, child. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And I remember speaking to you during that time. I had a shake up in my business and I was sad. And me and my business partner, my grandmother, we fell out. And, you know, it just was so much that happened. That's what's really cute. And that's what's really nice about friendship is being there for each other, you know, through thick and thin. And no matter what, you know, yes. you were going through. We are there for each other. And that's very important. And people should know with exactly what's going on right now in the world. Yes. And, and, you know, what we are seeing, what we are experiencing at the moment. I think, you know, it's a wake up call for us to come together, you yes. know. And I think it's together we stand um, divided we fall, you know. Right. And the sooner um, we understand that, I think, you know, because when I look at what's going on, politically in the world right now mm -hmm. and what our world governments are doing, you yeah. know, to the society right now and the division that is going on, I think. You know, I remembered, you know, a period in my life where the, I was taught to believe, you know, that um, discrimination is you cannot look at someone else differently. You know what I mean? And it was wrong to segregate against black people and wrong to segregate against Muslims and wrong to segregate against homosexuals, which is another story in itself yes. because in the homosexual community, there's so much on between transgender and 
you know, muscles and bears and whatever. So all of that is a subject on itself, you know, but I was taught to believe that you are not supposed to segregate and you're not supposed to discriminate, you know, and we were being fined or sanctioned or punished, you know, for that, because it was supposed to be, it, it was supposed to be wrong. And for me to hear, you know, um, uh, world leaders uh, uh, are now creating that division between the vaccinated and unvaccinated yeah. and saying it's because of the vaccinated, vaccinated, you know, it's just, it just seems so wrong, you know, and it just seems like, you know, I'm asking myself if, you know, Nazi, the Nazi, you know, um, movement that was way back when, you yeah. know, in the in the forties or whatever it is, if we are not seeing a rebirth of this, you know right. what I mean, the right. totalitarian regimes, and I and it's really scary because I have I have witnessed it with my friends because I have friends who are vaccinated yeah. and who will not talk to unvaccinated people. I oh, have seen it no. in people. I have seen it in my family as well. You know, so I think it's so unfair that the governments, international governments are fueling, you know, these kind, that form of discrimination, you know, like any other form of discrimination is bad, but they're introducing a new form of discrimination. And for me, that's a problem. So I cannot live with it. And I think, you know, the only way out of this, you know, they may say, because we do not know what is really going on you know, um, we do not know what's in or what's not in, you know, right. but I think, you know, I'm not, I'm saying, you know, because there's pro-vax and anti-vax. I'm not pro-vax. I'm not anti-vax. I'm pro-choice. You know what right. I mean? Right. You have a choice, you know, and it's your health. You know what right. I mean? And we are protected by the New Hamburg Code, you know, and what I'm realizing, this is almost blown to smithereens because governments are now not respecting what they have put in place to protect us and our health and your health is your health you cannot allow anybody to tell you or dictate to you what you can put in and out of your body right my rant for the day <laughs> right no i'm so i'm so glad that you started that way because they don't get to hear this uh, his, his camera might have froze um, they don't get to hear this in America. Vincent hails us from Paris, France, first of all. I'm just letting everyone know. Um, we might lose him. There he is. He's back. Um, I'm just letting them know. You might have some connection problems because okay. I'm seeing sometimes, you know. Yeah, but no problem. I can hear you for the moment. Okay, good. Well, I was letting them know. Vincent hails us from Paris, France, where he has made a living, where he has risen to fame all on his own, where he has... Um, where he is quite a pillar in his community. He's an artist there, he does fashion. And like I said in his introduction, he does everything. And um, it was kind of funny because when we were first booking this um, conversation for you guys, because we talk, but um, when we were booking it for you guys, he was doing a music video. So it just was, you know, Vincent is quite, I need you to understand why he's so passionate. Vincent is quite active in the French community, in the French, what, what's going on with government and legislation and law. And, and what he's saying is so important because it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be. And, you know, we saw that here in America too, Vincent, because we saw mask against unmask. You this see? is so unfortunate. Yeah. It really is, you know? And again, I can understand if there was some kind of scientific, you yeah. know, reason for doing it, you yeah. know, but we were not given a reason why, you know, and if we have to go on the science, the science has never told us to regurgitate what we've put out, you know what I mean? So if you are breathing out, you know, it means it's something that the body does not want and it's not of use for the body, you yeah. know what I mean? And the body has to take in something else. So how could you take in what you are breathing out? This is it's just like telling us, you know, um, you know, it's just like telling us that, you know, there's a problem and we have to wear diapers, you yeah. know, for the problem. Yeah. But they are telling us if we don't wear our diapers, you know, the other person next to us is being affected in what way, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or they're telling us, you know, um, it, I'm sorry, you know, sometimes you need to use um, 
uh, visual terms for people to better understand. It's just like, you know, you were telling me, you know, that I should go to bed with a condom even if there's nobody in my bed that mm -hmm. I'm having sex with. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes. It's, it's just, a, you know, the logics behind a lot of what they are saying to us. Yes. And it, it's not right. And what is very funny is they themselves are coming back and they're proving themselves to be right. So you know what? I don't understand the confusion that they are creating. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that confusion is um, filtering down yeah. and it's filtering down into the population and it's creating, you know, a division that we, or a divide that we should not have to go through, especially right now. You, you, know, know. you know, I just hope, I, I believe in God and I think love will show us the way. And I think, you know, in some or the other, I always say God is watching. You know what I mean? He is. You know, a lot of people are saying, if God exists, then why doesn't he intervene? We are not the ones to tell God when to intervene. He knows when he should intervene. And if, you know, you believe in God, what he's asking simply is that you trust him because yeah. he never said that there would be weapons formed against you. But he said, if you believe me, these weapons will not attain. They will not yes. harm you. So you just need to trust. And that's all I'm saying is to people, to your viewers, if they really believe in God, they should trust and let him do what he has to yes. do. You know, we shouldn't doubt, you know. But there's so many things you and myself can talk about. Don't forget, there's my childhood, where I come from, St. Lucia, how I got to France, how I made it in the business, you know. And now I'm ready, I'm getting ready to hit Broadway because now we are rehearsing for the new play, you know. So there's a lot to talk about, you know, there's a lot to cover. <laughs> okay, okay. But, but and I again, 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 yes. I'm preparing my own collection. So I'm doing a whole collection that I want to present, you know, sometime in March, you know, and it's a, it's a couture collection and the entire collection is done by hand, you know, and it's all crochet. Oh my God. You got me excited. So that's okay. so much to talk okay, about. Okay. So let, okay. So let, let's, yeah. But I want them to understand that I'm, I'm glad that you started this way because you're a famous person, you're a celebrity, your voice, it's out there and people know it. And to use it to tell people to do their own research and to believe in God. But that's and, what, if yeah. I put the information yeah. out there, I'm not saying that information is for right. or against. I'm right. putting the information out there. You need to take the information and yeah. run with it. Yes. Meaning, do your research. You know what I mean? But I'm not telling you to get vaccinated. I'm not telling you to stay unvaccinated. Yes. I'm not, you know, anti-vax because, you know, I have taken the, when you go to Africa, you need to take a vaccination for polio, you yeah. know? So I take the vaccination. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, when I'm going, when, when you are sick for the flu, you take the flu shot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, we need to find out what is going on. You just, you just don't, there's a virus and, you know, normally it takes three to four years, you yeah. know, to perfect a vaccine. And yeah. this vaccine, it just arrived out of nowhere, you yeah. know, you know, so people need to do their work, and, you know, and, and, and then, somehow or the other, like you say, I happen to be, you know, a celebrity in Europe and somehow or the other, I would, I, I, I think I'm using my voice or my platform to advocate, you know, but advocate for the better good. And this is very important. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, bless his heart. May he rest in peace. You know, Sidney Poitier, he was one of the persons that I really looked up to. You yeah. know what I mean? This man was chic. This man was effortless in his advocacy. And yeah. there was nothing vulgar about the way he did it. And when you look at what's going on right now with what was going back then, you know, yeah. somehow or the other, we have just fallen along the way because we have been made pawns in the business. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And, you know, it's his presence was advocacy in itself. You know what I mean? Yes. Violence when he opened his mouth to say something. Yes. What I don't understand is 
in the black community because we are black so you have to go in you, you know when in the black community when you see all of these divisions and insults among black celebrities themselves even the way they are dressed even the way they conduct themselves publicly for me that's a problem because we were not brought up to believe that what it was all about and you know if you have a voice or god gives you a talent and this talent you know you can feather it with that talent I do not think, you know, you need to be naked, you know, to bring about, you know, the message that you're bringing about and to, um, to often we see people with real talent like Beyonce, like Nicki Minaj and these people like that. And it, it has to pass, you know, in a commercial way where the body is instrumentalized or the woman is low rated or she has to do something in a vulgar way to make the message go through. You know what I mean? Diane Carroll didn't do that and she became a star. She rose to stardom. Lena Horn didn't do it. So why are we um, witnessing, you know, a new generation of celebrities that must pass through the sexual channel to get to what they want to say or to get their message across? I have a problem with that, you know what I mean? And I am lucky because I'm a man and I'm very proud to say that I'm a man. A you know beautiful what I mean? one. But, but a beautiful very funny. one. I rose to stardom because I'm effeminate, you know? I, I did not get to where I am because I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I am not a Rothschild. I am not a Rockefeller. You know what I mean? Yes. I am not. And I am not married into that either. Yes. I am not the wife of a famous person or yes. the son of a famous person. I right. had to do it on my own. Right. But I had many handicaps along the way because I was an effeminate looking boy. Because already, you know, growing up, society already tell you you are not welcome. You know yes. what I mean? Because you were different. You know, your yes. family is telling oh, we do not like the way you are. You should change, you know, to fit, to better fit into the family. Yes. And at the same time, you have religion that are telling you that you are an abomination and come to me, I will give you some kind of, you know, absolution. You know what I mean? God has always said, come to me as you are. I accept you. All you have to do is to ask. If you ask and you are sincere, and you believe in me, I will do what I have to do. So me, when I realized that I could not have my way with the family, I could not have my way with religion, and I could not have my way with society, I did not want the bridges. I had to form my own bridges. So at the age of 13, after a series of rapes yeah. by my uncle on mm -hmm. who I am, you know, I decided I don't want to do this anymore, you know? And St. Lucia is a beautiful island. It's like, um, how would I say it? Um, a postcard, like you go on holidays and you send a postcard. It's beautiful. The postcard is fabulous. It's C sex and sun, whatever you want. You know what I mean? Yes. But um, for homosexuals in the community there, because it's a very macho, it's a very homophobic society. Mm -hmm. And growing up as a child in that society, I was typhoid. You know what I mean? And I had to get away, you know? And the only way I could have gotten away was you know, to go overseas or to go study or to do something that I felt was good for me. Because back then when I was a child, you know, I wanted to become a fashion designer. That's what I wanted to do. But you know what it's like to grow up in a black uh, family, a black family, you know, if you want to be a hairdresser, if you want to be a makeup artist, yeah. if you want to be a designer, that's a hobby. You can do it on the side and you could be good at it. But you need to pick up a career. A career is something that brings money. So that means you can be a mechanic, you can be a mason, you can be a lawyer, you can be a doctor, you can be all of that, but do not become, you know, a designer. And they are not aware that these, uh, the fashion industry generates, you know, millions and millions and millions, you know, of dollars. For them, this is not, you know, so, Telling your parents you want to be a fashion designer is no, forget about it. You know what I mean? So I had to find a way out of the, the island and the best way to do it was to do good academically when I was going to school. And that's what I was, you know? So at the age of what, 18, 
I got a scholarship when I left when I left the university in St. Lucia. I got a scholarship to go to the States. So I ended up for the first time at the age of 18, very young, you know, in New York City, you know, <laughs> in Conning Elmira, you know, Orange River County, you know, going to school, you know. Um, and studying because I got a scholarship from the Kellogg's Foundation. And the Kellogg's Foundation, what they really do is, you know, they offer scholarships to uh, third world country students, you know, where they can come, you know, to metropolitan countries, study. But after your studies, you need to go back to your country because you need to put back into your country what they paid for you. You know, it's, 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 Right. It's lopsided, but, right. you know, it is life, you know, and that is the path, you know, that my life had to take. So I did it. So I was there. I was living in a convent, you know, um, because oh, God. You know, all of the students. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was living in a convent. I had to pray every day. You know what I mean? That yeah. was what it was like, you know, oh, I was, so, get up to go to school. I'm not used to the cold, you know, it's really incredible. And it's, you know, and I love this kind of adventures, you know what I mean? Yes. It's just like, it's just because in the Caribbean it's warm all the, all year round, except yeah. when it's the hurricane season, but yeah. it is warm, you know? So then you are in the dead of winter, you do not have the proper clothing, you don't, you know, and as a student, you do not have the money. You have to wait right. for the Keller Foundation to give you some money every month, you know? So it was not easy. So I went over there to study what? Nothing that I wanted to do. Oh. I took the scholarship simply because it was a way of getting out, out of the country. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I took the scholarship to study business administration and accounts. Could you imagine? Oof. Oof. <laughs> yeah, but I did it and I did it well. But you know, yeah. you know yeah. I was so lucky. I met, you know, uh, different people. I did uh, I worked for uh, a while at the house of Bill Blass because I yeah. met, you know, one of the persons working there. You know, her name was Marissa Molina. She introduced me to Bill Blass. I worked there for a while. I knew right away that's what I wanted to do. So even if I was going to school studying business, I was interning at Bill Blass and that was really nice. You know what I mean? Wow. But all of this fabulousness came to an end and you had to go back to St. Lucia, you know, and you had to, you know, so... I had to hit the job market and I was only 21. Hitting the job market, you know, I started looking for a job. I cut my hair, you yes. know, all of, all of this is natural, by the way. Yeah. I had to cut my hair, you know, because I don't believe in all of the fakeries, right. you know. I'm just a hundred percent organic, you yes. know what I mean? Everything, yeah. you know, yes. at the age of 56, you know, yeah. so just and say. Fabulous. You know, Thank you, love. You yeah. know, so I, I hit the job market and I started looking for, for work, you know, and I had a girlfriend, she was working at a bank and she was saying to me, you know, there is um, an opening at the bank. They're looking for somebody, you know, but do not send your application, write, you know, a motivational letter, do your application with the CV and take it in to, you know, the human resources person. So, <laughs> I did my best. I cut my hair. Oh. I dressed up as masculine as I could, oh. you know, in a suit and everything. And a swan in a suit. A, job. a swan in a suit. A swan in a suit. Can, can you I get that, that image? A swan. I felt so uncomfortable, but I had to work, honey child. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. So I went into the bank and I asked for the lady, you know, uh, the human resources lady. And when she came over, she looked at me, she looked up, she looked down, she went, you know, oh, I'm sorry, but um, I think you're not the right person for the job. I would never give a boy like you a job in the bank. And I was like going, but why? She said, I don't want the customers to think that's what we are all about. And you know what? It's passive discrimination that we witness in society, you know, just because I was very eloquent, I was very elegant in my delivery, you know, because my sexuality has nothing to do with anyone. Wow. You know, what I do in my bedroom, this is my business. It has nothing to do with you. I was taught to believe as a child, you know, the minute you conduct yourself, you know, with poise, 
elegance and your delivery is flawless, then everything is okay. So that's what I did, you know what I mean? Yeah. But because she had her biases, you know, she had to, she had to create that situation where I felt her bias, you know what I mean? Wow. And at that point, I knew that this was not the route that I wanted to do, yeah. not the route that I wanted to take. You know, yeah. I had to take another route. So what I did was there was this guy who had a huge fabric shop, you know, mm -hmm. selling fabric, you know, in St. Lucia. So mm -hmm. I used to go there. It used to relax me. I used to choose fabrics. I used to collect fabrics, do um dress myself every day i had a different outfit yeah. i dress myself and some prominent women in the society started recognizing this yeah. you know what i mean and yeah. these women started asking me if i could design you know their garments for them you know yeah. and you know black people i'm sorry they're white people looking at or other races looking at but black people are very funny when they come from you know the caribbean especially because these are what i know you know because church is church party is party work is work leisure is leisure you know what i mean so you need something to go to the beach you need something to go to church you need something to go to work and you need something for leisure you know what i mean and you never wear the same thing twice that is you know that is, this is so important for them you know what i mean yes so, you know so i was very busy you know with these women and not only was i busy you know um St. Lucia is a very small country in the caribbean between martinique uh the french island of martinique and also the island of saint vincent you know and um <clears throat> St. Lucia got its independence 40 something years ago so on the 10th anniversary independence of St. Lucia I was 21, um, the 10th anniversary independence of St. Lucia, you know, what happened was um, there was, um, I think some agency organized a huge fashion show, you know, at the time, you know, for the 10th anniversary independence, you know, with Prince Charles and, you know, all of these dignitaries and all of these amb ambassadors and all of these politicians, you know, they organized it. So what I did was that I entered the competition and when I entered the competition, I um, was working for another brand, but I entered as a separate entity as well. Mm -hmm. So what I did was that I did not have the time, you know, to, because I was working on the collection for the brand that I was working with, mm -hmm. I did not have the time, you know, to do my own collection. Mm -hmm. So very smart. You know what I did? A lot of these women that I was sewing for, or I was designing for, they were model sizes too. So yeah. what I did was that, and not only were they model sizes, they were model sizes, meaning we had plus size models we had, but they were tall, you know, and what was that? So I decided to collect all of the dresses. So I borrowed the dresses from these women. Yes, Vincent. <laughs> and I did a fashion show that I called a merry mix of this and that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this and that yes uh, and you know at the end of that uh, on the, at the end of that show you know they were giving prizes to different designers and one of the different designers and i walked away with the most prestigious award i walked mm -hmm. away with the designer of the year you know wow. at the time the french ambassador was in the audience so he came on the pulpit and then he said I am very impressed with the job that this young man has done, you know, as a fashion designer. So what we, the French embassy, would like to do on our part, we are going to find out if we, no, we are going to send this young man to France where he will study fashion and he will work at the house of Yves Saint Laurent. So what I did was that I came to France six months later and I started working at the house of Pac Robin. I worked with Yves Saint Laurent. I worked with many designers. I went to school. I did my schooling at the international fashion school called Esmod. Say it again. Say it again. It cut, it cut out. It cut out. Say it again. Hold on. It, it connects. I, I connected. Yeah. Hold on. It, it's the connection. Um, I, I went to school at the most. I, I went to school at at one at the school, the fashion school, one of the most famous international fashion universities, you know, 
Yes. It's you can find this one in France, you know, it's it's a very big scope. There's some there's one in China, there's one in Japan, you know. So it's and it's a lot of international um, students, in fact. Mm. So I studied there. While I studied there, I did lots of internship with lots of designers. And then I got a job working with uh, a designer called Guy Roche at the time. Oh. You know, I worked again with um, Pac Roban. I worked with young designers um, called Le Kwane Ima. I worked with um, um, how do you, Olivier Guima. I worked with Andre Walker. Check out Andre Walker. He could be somebody that would be quite interesting for you to um, interview. I will get you in touch with him. He's fabulous. He lives in New York and he is very well versed. You know, he's like a fashion Bible. He's really good. And, you know, he has been interviewed by men. He's been interviewed. He's, you know, his, his last, the last exhibition he had was at the um, Fashion Museum in, in New York. Wow. He had it last year you know what i mean i'll put you in touch with him yes. that way you guys can he's a wonderful person he's exceptional you'd love him you know he's a very good friend you know and thanks to andrew walker you know i um i met mark jacobs and i worked with mark jacobs and andrew walker as um their personal assistant and you know i learned so much you know, because at the time, Mark was the creative director at Louis Vuitton. So I learned a lot working with him at Vuitton, you know, and one of that. And that was just absolutely fabulous. So that was my fashion parkour, you know. So, so wait, so I, I'm wh while you were speaking, I wouldn't dare interrupt you. And I was having visions. I was seeing a young Vincent running around happy as hell in France. Do, going and studying and learning and being in France and being able to enjoy the freedom of expression and the freedom of identity. France permits you this, in fact, because France don't judge you, you know, and you know, they say it's in France, there's, 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 there's something that I say about France and Paris is la berceau de luxe et de bon goût, you know, it is the, the, the crib you know, of luxury and good taste, you know what I mean? And to be young and carefree in France, especially in Paris, that is something I wish on every youngster, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That is an experience they should have. Yeah. That is an experience they should make because traveling really helps. And, you know, there's, there's so much to see, so much to learn, you know? And, you know, France is so full of history, you know what I mean? And you just walk around and you see all of these monuments. These monuments, you know, they inspire you. It inspires you creatively. It inspires you emotionally. There's so much you can do. You've been to Paris. You yes. see what it is like. Just a walk along the Seine is just absolutely fabulous. Yes. All of these in America, in, in fashion is concentrated, it's, it's, it's everywhere, you know what I mean? So there's always a surprise, which is just absolutely, absolutely fabulous. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Good. I say what is beautiful about France, about Paris, is, you know, there's this surprise element everywhere you go so you're always inspired you know and i'm really happy about it and france has become my home and i've been living in france for the past 32 years i love france i travel to the states i travel a lot because of my job i travel um to 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 italy i travel to germany i travel to switzerland i've been to new york i've been to um hollywood to california i've i've done three shows in California, Vincent goes to Hollywood. I did, um, I did a stint on, um, oh God, uh, um, uh, oh, I can't remember the, the, the series, you know, um, a very, very, very famous series. I did a stint on it in the States. And then we came back to France and, you know, just went back to my TV work, you know, I did a follow with Magloire. I did so many different things. And now what I'm doing is, um, preparing my own collection because that's what you know the the situation right now and with all of the confinements with all of the because events took a blow yeah the events 
everything that is linked to events took a blow, mm -hmm. in fact, you know? So because everything linked to events took a blow, what we had to do, you, need, you, needed, you had to reinvent yourself. You know what I mean? That's what I did. <laughs> and reinventing yourself, you know, is something which is really important. You must not be afraid to reinvent yourself. Right. You know what I mean? So what I said to myself, yeah, I should learn other, you know, other jobs, other, I have other talents. Unfortunately, I'm not the kind of person, I, I don't think, because I tried it, I tried, you know, for the moment I was like, okay, you know something, uh, because everything is on standby for the moment, then probably you can work in a hotel or you can work at a bar and things like that. And the people say, but you are famous. <laughs> we would not give you a job to wait on people. You know? <laughs> exactly, Vincent. Exactly. But you're thinking, you're thinking, I gotta make my rent. I gotta make my rent. I'm an artist. I'm saying, but... <laughs> I need to put I need to put money on the I need to put food on my table and I need to pay the rent. You know what I mean? I was just simply thinking that way. But they were like, oh no, 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 no. You know, you're famous, you know, and whatnot. So that we cannot do this, you know what I mean? So I had to go back to my first love. So what I did was that I started, I, when I was a child to make extra cash while I was going to school, I crochet a lot, you know? Yeah. So um, fashion uh, and crochet, I felt there was a very good link there. So what I did was that I started working on some crochet garments, which became very good too, even if one dress, you know, would take me about, you know, a month to do, yeah. but the result is just, absolutely absolutely fabulous you know what i mean and because the results was absolutely fabulous everybody was like saying to me but vincent why don't you do a collection so i decided you know with the time that i have i'm going to do the collection see how it works try and source out you know um where i can get it done afterwards you know what i mean and in the meantime i took acting classes yeah. you know so um i'm starting as if you play. needed them as if you needed them because you've been <laughs> on television and in movies don't make me pull up your 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 resume now so you can play around acting you you yeah, did but but you did that to keep to stay busy and to further, like you said, be able to move into other areas. But, um, sweetie, you've been, um, you've been acting, let's see, uh, you've been acting since 2003. <laughs> you all are very well. I don't play no games, baby. And you're my friend. Yeah, I don't care yeah, what these people have to say. You're my friend. So I'm like, no. I, you've been acting since I did a couple of years, yes. Yeah, because I was in. Paris, according to Musa, yeah, you know, that's what it Paris is. Musa, that's which what it is. Which got 2015 uh, was kickback. Come on now, we did kick me. back, yes. And all of these movies went to the Cannes Film Festival. Yes, you can find photos of me on the net at the Cannes Film Festival. I have it's one because. to use. That I'm using one as a thumbnail for this video. It's exactly because Paris. what is very strange as well, you know, there's certain rules and regulations, you know, for the Cannes Film Festival, and normally men are supposed to wear black and you know a, a tie and it, it must be a bow tie it must not be a tie you know what right. I mean? and I was like going but how do I do this how do I juggle you know with this because you know that is not the the the, the character that I'm playing in these films you right. know are normally uh, 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 females you know what I mean and yes. I was like going what do I do so I had a talk with you know the director of um, the Cattle Festival. And I said, I do not know how to, you know, how to, how to come there. And he was like, Connections guys, it's Paris. Be Connections. yourself. When he told me, I went out to you, I'm, I'm model size. I'm a 36, yes. you know? Yes. And I'm tall like a model, and you know, I'm, I'm model size. And what is very funny about me is that I have a tiny bum, but it's really well shaped. Yeah. And I have very long, well shaped legs. You know yes. what I mean? Yes, you and do. Top it off with heels, you cannot go wrong, you know? Yes. So when 
all of the women were wearing, you know, these long, fluid, um, body conscious dresses. I was like going, no, I want to go in a different direction. So uh -huh. I wore a really short dress, you yeah. know, from one of my friends who's a very famous fashion designer called Frank Sorbier. And I wore this handkerchief dress from him, it's, it's, you know, and it was it's really a beautiful. style moment, Vincent. It's a style It was just moment. absolutely. It's all incredible. over the internet, Vincent. The pictures of you and the... It was considered a style moment. Do you understand yeah. this, darling? I want them to understand. You know, they see- but You were telling me this. Yes, I'm like, I'm not gonna listen. You're my friend. I'm not gonna let my celebrity friend not know. It was considered a style moment. The dress, let me pull up the dress. It was beautiful. When I tell you it was beautiful, Oh my God. Oh my God. It was beautiful. Oh, I can't I, wait to get to Paris after all of this is said. I done. know. I know. There it is. There it is. There it is. That'll be so, so nice, you know. I, I can't wait. I'm coming, Vincent. I'm coming. All right. I don't know who owns this picture. I, I want to show it, but it's it's going to be the thumbnail. But it was on the internet. So I got it from the internet. Let me see what the source is. Who's the source? It was IMDB. So okay. So they they have this picture. It was a stunning style moment. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Don't play with me. I'm gonna let my friend know. I'm gonna let the world know about my friend. That was a stunning style. Yeah, it, so was, it was a style moment because my thing is, you know, I must be honest. Most people don't get the opportunities that I get. I've worked very hard for them. And I feel very honored when people that have been working for a long, 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 long time, long, long, long time, I, and, and they see something in me, it makes me honored. So then I do my due diligence. You know, I- but What I like most about you is that, you know, you listen and not yes. many people do that. You know, I think, and you want to understand. And yes. I think you- pay Very interest. much so. <laughs> very it's much so. so. And that's what I like. It. That's what I appreciate about at you and you've had your ups and downs but yes. your ups and downs did not make you bitter you oh. know what i mean and there were there were ups and there were downs and the downs you took it and you made it you made the downs your strength you know <laughs> this is very important what i think is very sad with what we are witnessing right now with um, the slew of said influencers, yes. you know, social media influencers. It's all about themselves. It's, it's all around their navel. It's, you know, it's very, it's like ego. You know what I mean? Yes. You know, I think God has always said, you know, if you share, it will come back to you. Exactly. You know, and some people just uh, don't know how to share. It's all about them and their ego. And you know, it's so unfortunate. A lot of the people we see, the so-called influencers, social media influencers, they come across as very greedy. Yes. They come across as very greedy. And it's all about themselves. And unfortunately for some of them. Fortunately for some of them, they have gorgeous bodies and they think their bodies will save them. You know what I mean? So because I have a beautiful body, I will always be naked in a photo, you know? But I'm sorry, if I'm following an influencer, I am following you because I'm learning from you. Yeah. You know, I need to, it's very important. Yeah. So your bum in, a, in, 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 in um, how do you call that? Your bum in, in an undergarment is yeah. of no interest to me. What interests me is what's going on in your head. How you think, how you operate is very important for me. You know, I will follow you because you will suggest to me a book. Yeah. You will suggest to me, you know, a movie. Yeah. You will tell me about an experience you've had and that experience, how it can alter and make life-changing moments for me as well. You know what I mean? I'm not going to leave your life by proxy because you are at every party and you are dressed because you are dressed for free by designers because you have a million followers. I really don't care about this. You know what I'm saying? You know that young people right now they do not have priority. You have to bear with us. You know what I mean? And witnessing this for themselves and that um need to fit in or to belong i never had it you yeah, know what i mean because yeah. i created 
my own space, yeah. you know? And in creating that space, I accommodated who I felt, yeah. you know, would understand what I am going through. Yes. You know what I mean? Or what I have to give, the message I am giving off. You know what I mean? So if I'm reading Maya Angelou and Maya Angelou, she inspires me and she um, quotes, or she, there's a quote of Maya Angelou, I would share that quote with my public and my platform because that, that um, whatever, it, that um, quote, it had a profound, you know. Um, effect on you, yeah. That effect effect on me, you know what I mean? If I go to a museum and the museum, because, you know, a lot of these, um, how do you call that? Um, a lot of these uh, influencers, they come to Paris. Yeah. And you know what? You would see them. And it's all about themselves. You'd see them in front of a monument every day. You know what I mean? But did they get the opportunity or did they take the opportunity to go into the monument? Can you give me a, you know, a small his, his, historic moment about the museum? Why am I watching this museum? I don't care that you are in Paris, but tell me, you know, I'm in Paris, you know, this is the Eiffel Tower. It was made by Gustave Eiffel. It comes from, you know, an inspiration because he was an engineer and Gustave Eiffel, he was the one that created the Gatta Belt. And if you look at the Eiffel Tower, it is a Gatta Belt. Of course you would know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's just information you know what i mean it's just information and you know uh, and you know if you go to the invalid which is very beautiful and you know with the gold tops and things like that a lot of people don't you know you take a picture in front of that beautiful monument called the invalid and you do not even know it yeah. is a tomb that's where napoleon is buried yeah so yeah. just just taking the photo and not telling me what it's all about and just to say you're in paris i don't care <laughs> <laughs> you never do. And I love it. No, I you really don't. Do. And I'm not going to follow someone, you know, that has no talent whatsoever. Your only talent is because you're dressed differently. You are showing your bum or your breasts, you know, because it's summer and you are wearing a, a designer garment. That is beautiful. But you are living by proxy, you know, the talent of someone else because you're wearing the person's garments for free. And the person just offered you the garment simply or borrowed simply because you have 2 million followers, but we do not really care about you. Right. right. You know what I say, Vincent? I said this last night. That's why I was a little tardy this morning because the, the interview last night was two hours. It just, it, it became usually oh, that's nice. That's cool. You, you gotta, cool. you gotta see it. It was a lot, there was a lot offered there, but um, you're absolutely right. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say that even in that interview, we were discussing fashion and we were discussing the fact that, you know, it, there is story behind it. It's not just, you know, oh, I've been seen in something and oh, I'm wearing something and oh, this designer gifted it to me. Yeah, but the designer is telling a story. You know what I mean? But do you know the story? Right. Or are you just wearing the garment? You know what I mean? Right. right. Okay. You know, because everybody wants to be a part of the universe of the designer. But, right. you know, it's not just saying I'm wearing Jean-Paul Gaultier or I'm wearing Dolce Gabbana or I'm wearing Dior or I'm wearing Chanel. You know what I mean? Do you know the story? Do you know the history of the house? Yeah. Do you know exactly what the house represents? You know what I mean? And are you wearing the, are you wearing what was borrowed or what was given to you for free? Are you wearing it the right way? Yeah. Oh, 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 you, oh. And the black is white, darling. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> see, see. Okay, I'm gonna take that moment right there to segue for one second. This man studied fashion. This man is fashion, and on top of that, tell them about the the fashion award that you received from the queen. Oh, oh yes, baby, you're my friend. Like uh, when I get there, I'm gonna be running around yeah. with you. Yeah. Like this is not, yeah. Yeah, in 2018, yes. you know, I, you know, I have friends from Dubai, yes. you know, and they invite me to Dubai all the time, but I never wanted to go because I always had, you know, 
preconceived ideas because of what people told me nice. they had experienced when they had gone over there. Nice. You know what I mean? So every time my friends invited me, I was like going, no, I don't think I want to come. You know, it's not my style, you know, and I don't want to, I, I really do not want to um, make anyone uncomfortable. Right. You know what? I do not want to make anyone uncomfortable because it makes me uncomfortable yes. doing that. Mm -hmm. So because I do not want to do it, you know, and that culture is a culture that's very private. That culture is a culture that, you know, people that are very obvious like myself, you know, they, they could be very, you know. Yeah. So I respected it was not going was a form of respect for them, respecting their culture, because you know what? I I was told by many that you would look, be looked down upon. You know what I mean? And I have done so much in my life. Yeah. I have worked for what I have. You know, I do not want anyone to make me uncomfortable for being who I am. You right. know what I mean? Right. I think I've passed that age where I have to please anyone. So right. if you know what? I do not feel welcome. I will not go. You know what I mean? Right. So then I met, I was working with the mayor of Paris. She invited me um, to collaborate with her on um, a fashion show because yes. they were doing, you know, a week of discrimination. Yeah. You know, a week of discrimination. So she said to me, Vincent, I'd like to work with you, but I do not know how yet. So then she asked me to come into her office you know, at the Mairie de Paris, you know what the Mairie de Paris is, it's a lovely monument, and I was in there, you know, so uh, it, it was just like a mini Versailles, you know, it's just absolutely fabulous, you know, just walking in there, you just feel like, you know, it's just history falling off your back, you know, yeah. it's, just, it's just absolutely so amazing, you know, and then I went to meet her, and she gave me a um, a paper with all of the discriminations, discriminations against homosexuals, discrimination against ageism, you know, discrimination against, um, you know, all these different things. And she automatically chose, you know, well, probably it would be quite interesting, Mr. Magdo, you know, that you, you, um, you work with us on discrimination where homosexuals are concerned. And I was like going, um, why are you telling me this? Why? Because you think I'm homosexual? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, going, well, I can only see this. I was like going, no, I think the gay lobby is one of the most powerful lobbies in the world after the Jewish lobby. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I said, you know what? I think, you know, the gay people do not need me to advocate for them. You know, they can do that on their own. And the gay people need to clean up their shop and their mess before they ask me to advocate for them. Because you know what? <laughs> The gay community was the community I had the most problems with. Like, likewise, likewise, I have too. Yeah, yeah. Bear with us. He's in France, and the connection is weird. Just... Give him some time. He'll be back. Hold on. If they understand, can you hold on? Hold on, I, there we go. You have to wait for yeah. it to do what yeah, it's doing. I'm saying sometimes, you know, what bothers me the most is I ask myself, does the gay community really need me to advocate for them? I say, no, they do not need me to advocate for them because the gay community sometimes, I um, some that because the most, the most discrimination that I have suffered in my life was from the gay community. <laughs> Why? Because the gay community in itself, you know, is another community that has many different community trying to cohabit, in fact. And if you do not belong to one of these small communities that is in the gay community, then you are cast away. Yeah. You know what I mean? You must know that a lot of the gay people, you know, they, I ask myself, do they really understand their history? Do they understand who permitted and what permitted them to be able to express themselves so openly today? It's boys yeah. like you and myself. Yeah. Because we were burned down, we were shot, we were, you know, you just have to study Stonewall. Yeah. It was extravagant people like you and myself, yeah. you know, that created and opened a way for them. You know what I mean? And I always felt that I was not welcome in the gay community simply because they did not know which 
um, which community in the gay community I belonged to because yeah. I was not I was not a muscle queen. I was not a bear. I was not 18, you yeah. know. And at the same time, I was not a transsexual. I was not a transvestite. I was not a drag queen. I was just a beautiful, elegant, effeminate boy yeah. that just did not want um, to be branded. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they need to be branded to be able to fit in. So you need to be a muscle queen to go to the muscle clubs and then always be have your muscles out and showing it off in the nightclubs. Yeah. Or, or showing it out on, you know, on, in the, in, on, on, on social media. Or you need to be very, very young, you know, and, you know, you have all... Because you know how it is already in the community. So I never felt that I was, you know, welcome in the community. Mm. But at the same time, the minute that I became a celebrity, they tried to recuperate, you know, because now you have a platform and you have a voice. Now you can speak for us. And then what I said to them, I said, I am very proud. I think you guys can do it on your own. You do not <laughs> need me to do it for you. For you, you know, I rather give my voice, you know, to something that I really went through. I was abused as a child, and yes. as a child, I want to give my voice to this. I want to give my voice to battered women and abused women and abused children, you know. And that's what I've always advocated for. You know what I mean? So when the mayor of Paris. She offered me this. I said, no, I think we have are with to do us. That. They do not need me. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. They do not need us. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Now. When she offered me that, and she offered me the list of all of the different, you know, discriminations. And then I saw a word, a word. I saw a word. And I did not understand the word, you know. And the word um, in France is called grossophobia. Oh. You know what I mean? And to English for obesity. Um, it's obesity. You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. It's can obesity, you? isn't it? You can hear me now? Yeah. When she gave me that document, you know, I saw a word that caught my attention and it's called gosophobia. And I was like, what is gosophobia? And she said, fat phobia. I you thought know so. I mean? Obesity. I and thought so. When mm -hmm. she said fat phobia, I said, people really are afraid of fat people. I said, well, that's where I want to go. I said, because fashion has always integrated. So I wanted to work with that. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Hello. You, you know how it gets over there, the weather. <laughs> the image is, uh, yeah. the image is frozen. Give it a sec. It'll come back. Do a dance. Don't Move worry. Back. Yeah, you're there. You know. uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. So, and you can hear me? I can hear you now. There you, I see you. There you go. There you go. Oh, okay, cool. So when, when she, uh, when I saw it was fat phobia, I said, you know what? Fashion has not been very gracious, you know? to fat people because yeah. fat people cannot get fat people. Designers, you know, they stop at one size. So I said, I would like to work, you know, on fat phobia. So what I did was that, I said, that is what I'm going to do. And I organized one of the biggest historical moments in the history of the mayor of Paris. Yes. You know, the, you know, I, the Hotel de Ville, they say in France, I, I, cre I did a fashion show with 67, fat women that yeah. I casted off the streets. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. And what I did with that, I took five, no, seven fashion designers that I casted as well from all around the world. And I said, I am going to give you a challenge. The challenge is you are supposed to dress fat women. Yes. You know, I will take you out of your comfort zone and you are supposed to dress these women. And the show was a blast, you know? I know, I know it was. And one of the persons was. that I met, you know, one of the persons that I met was a princess from, from Dubai. And that princess, she has her own fashion line, you know? And I had never met her before, but I, I spoke to her online and I said to her, would you like to dress these women? And she said, yes, she took the challenge. She came to France, I met her. And when I met her, 
this lady, we have a very good friendship. Her name is Muna Almansori. You know, you can check her out on thing. I, I, will, I will organize for you to do an interview with her. Yes. She's a really wonderful person. You know, and my friends. For that, you know? My friends yes. are helping me. But yes. And this lady invited me to Dubai. When I she when when she invited me, I said no. You know, she and I she, she told me why. And I explained to her, tell me, Vincent, you know what? Listen to me. You know, all of what these people said to you about my country is wrong. I will invite you to my country and I will show you that it is wrong. This woman, she did exactly what she said. She invited me to her country. She told me, Vincent, when you are coming in, you know, you are a man. Look like what is on your passport, the photo that is on your passport. But the minute you're in the country and you have passed, you know, the, how do you call it? Customs, the, customs. The customs. Yeah. So when you pass the customs, the people don't care. They just need to see that the person in front of them is that is the person. So you're not going to come like, you know, a tranny, you know, yes. and on your passport photo, you are looking something else, you know? Right. So she said, do not confuse them, you know? Yes. And I went there, I spent two weeks. While I was over there, she invited me for something purpose, for a purpose. Yeah. And I was like, you know, she invited me for two weeks, all expense paid because yeah. she's a princess, princess. Or that, mm-hmm. you know, and she needed some consulting on her old fashioned show and things like that. So she invited me to a huge award ceremony yes. in, um, in, um, in Dubai. And it's a fashion award ceremony where they were giving prizes to the best designers, best models, best what not was that. And could you imagine all of these men that are there with their, you know, their, their Arab attire and things yes. like that? And you have to be very careful. And there are all of these princesses and all. So you have to be very careful. Even if I was dressed, right. you know, with trousers and high heels, you know, I had, to, I had to conduct myself because I knew what I was doing. And again, when you're out in public, you have to look the part, you know. So I did what I had to do, you know, to be there. And then after a while, there was the women presented. No. The, the presenters of the thing said, and the best fashion icon award goes to Vincent McDonald. I was like, what? She did she said, it on purpose. She set you up. Yeah. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> she set you up. <laughs> I was like, no. Do you realize this is the first time I went to this country? You know what I mean? And they're offering me, and they're offering me an icon, a fashion icon award. Yeah. Me being who I am, how I am, you know, and not only that, you know, the next day it was on the covers of all of the, the you know, the, the newspapers. For me, this is huge. Yeah. So all of what I was being told about this country was completely the opposite. You know what I mean? That's why it is really important, you know, to have your own experience, you know. That very same year, I got a call, you know, from the government of my country in St. Lucia. And they were like going, Vincent, we have something to say to you. And I was like going, what is this? <laughs> this because my, my relationship with my country is not the best, you know? Right. I, because I am, I am advocating for something which is very difficult. Because mm-hmm. even if, you know, um, it is not, even if, they don't practice it, but in my country, homo, homosexuality is still a crime. Yeah. And it, you could be in prison for 25 years. And you know what? There is no statute of limitations. If you get raped, if you get raped, the fact that you are homosexual, you go to prison. It's not the person that's raped, you go to, go to prison. You know what I mean? So all of this for me is a problem. So I'm using my voice to advocate to make them change the law. You know what I mean? Yeah. To, that, Law, that law is archaic in my opinion and yeah. I want them to change the law you know yeah. and some other Caribbean islands are already changing the law yeah. and England just wants to um, cr- there's a law in England that's going through right now because we are still a part of the commonwealth where they are doing reparations for all of the homosexual persons that, that they did they, they wronged, you know, so there is reparation. So I want to do the same thing for my country. But anyhow, talking about England, you know, so my country called me and they said, Vincent, we have something to say to you. You know, um, the queen has just honored you with a medal for 
you know, um, your work as an artist, you know, are you willing to, because you need to accept or say, say yes or say no. I was like, oh, really? I had to finish myself to say yeah. the queen, you know, is interested in my work and is ready yeah. to give me a medal for yeah. my work, you know, yeah. and at that very moment, you know, I think in my country, you know, the the way people saw me, it changed because right. you know what? You need it's always a so it's always by association, which is rather unfortunate. So now I have an NBA, you know, which is uh, a medal, a, a, a medal of honor from the Queen, you know. So I'm very happy about that, you know. At least I got it from the Queen before she passed away, you know. Yeah, I am so I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy that you got that award because. I love what you say on your page. And see, this is what I try to get Americans to understand about travel and Europe. You know, you didn't just walk up on the street and, I, and I'm going to say this, you didn't just walk on off the street in Hollywood, you know, take a couple of acting classes and then all of a sudden think that you could, you know, do, you know, what you do. You gave your craft as an artist in so many different facets you gave it years and years and years and but you years need to invest in those years, years. Yes. because it's rather important because you get better at it you yes. understand it better and you can better communicate as well because yes. um um normally i was supposed to be on Broadway in France, you know, yes. and in Switzerland. I was supposed to be on, on Broadway because we have a play which is called Hasta la Vista, yes. you know, and other fabulous, very talented, you know, um, actors, you know, and um, I am playing with, you know, a friend of mine and I was so happy to be with him again. So, because I was in the celebrity farm with him, he won it, you know, so, 19 years later, you know, to find him again and, and acting with him. And he's the, he's, he and myself have the main lead as well. I was like going, you know what I mean? And this guy, he's, he's a very, very famous French footballer, you know, so he'd never acted before. So, you know, it was just like, you know, it was, it's just absolutely amazing. And we were supposed to be um, in the theaters right now, but unfortunately with COVID, the capacity, of the theater, you know, it could no longer take, they were not allowing 100% of the capacity of the theater. They were only allowing 30%. 30% of the capacity is not interesting financially yeah. for the producer. You right. know, the actors are going to get paid. That is not a problem. The right. lights, the mat, the, you know, the, 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 the theater, all of them are getting paid. But on 30% of the capacity of the theater, how is he going to do this? Right. You know what I mean? So we had to push it back. So we went into rehearsals all the month of um, um, November last year. We were in rehearsals. And guess what? You know what? I am the pillar in the play. So I never go off stage. I'm always on stage. And I have interactions with all of the other actors. And there are seven actors, you know? So I have interaction. And you know what? You need to know not only your part. You need to know the part of the other actors because you need to know at what time is your cue for you to come in. So there's a lot of work and it is 84 pages. You know, I had to learn 84 pages. It was just like a book. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you can do it because you always excel hard. that school. You could do it because you that excel that school. Hard, but yeah. Jesus. To do it, no, but baby doll, to do it in French was not easy. So you know what? While I was do, while we were doing the rehearsals, some things just did not come in French. It just came automatically in English. And every time I tried to do it, I thought in English and I did not think of it in French. And you know, after a while, you know, the um the, 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 the producer is like going, if you feel comfortable to say it in English, just say it in English. The people will have to do it. But, you know, so I kind of <laughs> <laughs> but of course he's going to tell you that you're Vincent McDoom. Honestly. <laughs> but of course he's going to tell you that you're Vincent McDoom. But you know what? All of your work. See, and that's another thing. You know, I love because you are you are so passionate about everything that you do. What's your birth sign? I'm a Scorpio. I was born yeah. on the 27th of, 27th of um, October. But my rising is um, I'm a Sagittarius. 
you know, my wife is a Sagittarian. And you know Scorpios, Scorpios, Scorpios are like Phoenix, you know what I mean? They are very, very, very passionate about what they do. They're very professional in their approach, you know what I mean? And if they do not like something, they will not do it, you know what I mean? And Scorpios, they can destroy themselves when they are not happy. Yeah. And they would destroy themselves the moment they need to do it. But, you know, somehow or the other, there's always cinders that's still on fire. So yeah. it will come back at them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm, I'm very passionate about what I do. So if I undertake anything, yeah. I do it with passion. Yeah. And uh, it's the same way I treat people, in fact. Yeah. You know, I'm passionate about people. I love people. Yes. You know, I'm a people's person, you know. and but. I'm the kind of person, if I don't feel you, I don't feel you. Right. I, I do not have to say to you, you would see it. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and the worst thing is, I do not like people that are liars. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, of course. Of course, though. Of course. Because you live, you you live, in, first of all, of that, a life. I'm a politician. Yeah, you live a life in the truth. So everything about you is the truth. So, you know. And my truth is very you know what I mean? Because give him a second. It, it's it's Philadelphia to Paris, so give him a second with the connection. What I mean, and you can hear me. I can hear you now. Okay, I say you may not agree with me, but what I'm saying is not wrong. Right. 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 You may right. not agree with me and you have your reasons for not right. agreeing with what I'm saying is not wrong. Because right. you know what? I will never open my mouth to say something that right. I think that it will later on have repercussions on me and my right. image. Because you know what? It takes years to build an image. Yeah. It can go bomb in a second. And that I will not have happened to me. Because you know what? Sure. <laughs> who I am, I've worked too hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the same way if I'm offered a project, I will not accept the project yeah. because it's another project and I will do it for the money. I'm not that kind of person. Yeah. I will accept the project because it, it fits into, yeah. you know, my principles, my beliefs, you know what I mean? Yeah. I will not work with somebody I feel, you know, uh, no, I, not because I want to be connected or something of that sort. I will work with somebody, you know, and I will bide my time. I'm very patient. Yeah. I will bide my time. You yeah. know what I mean? So yes. I'm fine with that. Tell me about this music video that you were in, because we were supposed to do this last week, but you had a music video. So tell me about the music video. Yes. You know, um, actually, you know, I had um, this friend of mine and she, you know, has a new um song out and she mind you she mind you i'm just gonna video. say hold on i'm gonna say this to everybody vincent's famous and knows everyone okay now back to the music video <laughs> yeah. so she asked me to do the music video so when um she asked me to do the music video i mean she signed with a record company you know so if she's doing a music video she has a stylist and thing you know she has all of that you know two days before the shooting of the music video, she calls me and she said, Vincent, this is the scenario. This is the synopsis. So you know what you need to, we're doing, it's going to be like a disco era. So you need something which is very um, with glitters, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just absolutely fabulous. So I was like going, and um, how do I do this? She was like going, oh, don't worry. I'm sure you have these things in your wardrobe. That was a red flag. <laughs> that was a red flag, you know? And I was like, oh, okay, no problem, you know? Yeah. And then when she told me that, I was like going, okay, mm, that was a red flag. On the day of the shooting, it was pouring heavily in Paris. Oh. Heavily in Paris. Yeah. Not only pouring heavily, it was freezing and windy. Oh, you no. Know, I got up and you know what? I had no news from her. I had no news from her saying, oh, we are taking, we, we are ordering a car for you. Yeah, a car. Yeah. You, so. Give him a second. It's in Paris. We are ordering a car. It's coming to be coming to bring you back. Yeah. I didn't hear from her. 
you know, I didn't get Give him a second. So, you know, you know, and I just decided, you know, I think, you know, it's best to. Wow. You're gone again. No, but you and that's what, what, that's what, that's what's beautiful about life is, yes. being, is being able to choose, you yeah. know, and being able to say no when you want to say no yeah. and not having to justify why you said no. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and yet still people can respect you and respect your choices and do not hold it against you, you know, yeah. so. I'm a good person. I do not need people to tell me I'm a good person. You, you know are. What I mean? <laughs> so, so this play, it's coming to America? Yeah. It's coming to Canada, I know. Oh, Canada. You know, America, I wear. You know, Canada. And I know it's going to Canada. Yeah. yeah. So we are playing, first we are starting off in um, Switzerland. We have 18 days in Switzerland. Oof. So it was pushed back to this. It was... We were supposed to start in December last year. So it was pushed back to March this year. Okay. So we're starting in March this year, at the end of March. And we have already booked 18 days, 18 uh, representations already wow. in Switzerland. So we are going all over Switzerland for 18 days. We have that. And then I signed for two years, you know. Wow. So um, after we come to France with the play. And then I think we are going to Belgium with the play. Yeah. You know, the play is also going canada i know it's going to canada right. we would like to go to the caribbean we would like to go to the caribbean with it so i have to organize with the i have to organize i have to organize with um how do you call that i have to organize with the um, how do you call it you know the government oh yeah know, customs in my country, country. oh the government. Oh, yes, the government yes because the government you know yeah they have to they have to accommodate us you yeah. know what i mean yeah. Yeah. and all of that you know so I found a friend of mine, you know, he's going to accommodate us in Martinique, which is in the Caribbean. And then we'll go over to Guadeloupe that mm -hmm. I know he is, oh, he's organizing that and sponsors and whatnot is that. But the problem that I think we are having because the play is in French, if we, you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. If we decide that we are going to, excuse me, my batteries are going low. So okay. I'm just trying. A little bit but problem. don't worry um yeah i'm just i'm just getting some something to put it in you can see me still yes i can see you still I oh great i love this hold on a second hold on a second oh batteries please don't leave me now if you leave me now you take away the very best part of me Ooh, <laughs> baby please don't go <laughs> you know that song yes I love that song. <laughs> if you leave me now, you take away the very best part of me. Ooh, now, baby, please don't go. Okay, don't say too much. <laughs> I don't want them to get me. <laughs> I know, baby, please don't go. <laughs> like, don't say too much. I don't want them trying to see me, send me a copyright strike. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. You, Vincent, you are. You are literally, if I have a crown, you are the center jewel in my crown. You, saw my, you see my mannequin that I'm working on? But he said, he said, you see my mannequin. I'm giving him a praise. Yes, I mannequin. see your mannequin. Did you hear what I said to you? What? I said, if I had a crown, you are the jewel in my crown. Oh, that's very sweet. Uh, I truly. When are you coming to Paris? I know. Listen, I'm scared. I'm scared. Scared. I'm scared of, of COVID. I got the vaccine and I caught COVID and it was bad. And my grandmother. I had, I had COVID during the Christmas you season. You did better with it. Was, you did better with it than I did. Oh my God. Yeah, I I, you know what I did? I, um, I got the... Um, I got the the COVID when on the 16th I was diagnosed. I I, I got tested with it, yeah. and what I did was um, when I got tested, I isolated myself. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the symptoms that I had, I did not have. You know, uh, I did not lose taste yeah. or smell. Yeah. I did not have that, but I I I had the feeling that a bus. You know, I got passed on by a lorry. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and um, my skin 
became yes. ultra sensitive yes. and the wind if yeah. the wind blew my skin would hurt if yeah. you know the garments that i'm wearing if they rub yeah. on my skin or if yeah. anybody caressed me yeah. or if i took a shower it was yeah. just so painful oh, yes it was really really painful yeah. so because it was really painful that way you know, I did not go out for about seven days. I did not eat. I could not eat. I I, yeah. I was just not eating. The yeah. only thing I could take in was um, oranges and pineapples. Yeah. This is the only two things that I could have taken in. Yeah. But I drank a lot of tea. Yeah. Um, there's a tea coming from Africa, Madagascar, and the Caribbean. Yeah. And it's from a natural plant because I chose the homeopathic route, right. you know, to take care of it, you know. Yeah. So what I did was that I drank the tea and it's from a natural plant called Artemisia. Okay. I drank a lot of that, you know, okay. it was really good. I had three, um, black, three cups of tea, yeah. that tea per day. I, um, a lot of vitamin D3, yeah. you know, and yeah. zinc, 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 you need zinc, you know. Yeah. Unfortunately, we need the sun, but you know what? We do not have the sun because we are in the winter. In the so winter. that I had to get, you know, um, how do you call it? I had to get, you know, the equivalent of the sun. You yeah. know, I had to get it in the pharmacies, you yeah. know. And strange enough, you know, um, when all of this started, you know, the COVID and whatnot was that, the governments and... Um, a lot of medications were banned, you know, and these medications you could have, they were alternative medications, uh -huh. you know, and these alternative medications, they were banned. And uh -huh. these alternative medications, you could not get them in the pharmacies anymore. The pharmacies were not selling them, you know, like the chloroquine, you know, the hydroxychloroquine, you could not get it anymore. You could not get any more, you know, um, ivermectin. And there's a lot of things, you know, you could, you could try because, you know, I don't mind, like I said to you, I am not anti-vax, you right. know, you know, I am not, I am pro-choice, you know, and you cannot, under any circumstances, I feel, you know, um, the, 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 this gene therapy, I call it, yeah. is in its, it's, in, it's in its experimental stages, yeah. you know, and it's being forced upon all of us. Not only is it being forced upon all of us, you know, it's like a one size fits all, you know, yeah. you cannot, you know, you do not know what other underlying, you know, um, problems right. health-wise anybody has you cannot use one drug yeah. like an all size suite, a one size fit all on everybody yeah the same way you cannot give a drug that you are giving to for example a 90 something year old man and woman you cannot give it to a three-year-old child or a five-year-old child right. you know what i mean it is not made for the child this way you know what i mean so as long as this is still in its experimental stages you need to be very careful yeah. with it you know what i mean yeah. you cannot have a virus so you are not aware of a virus a virus is new it comes out like this out of nowhere yeah. and six months later you have a drug you know what i mean guess yeah. what you know it's 40 years now. Yeah. Baby girl, listen to me. It's 40 years now. We're talking about AIDS. Where's the where's 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 the where's the, where's the vaccine for AIDS? Right. <laughs> right. Do you know I saw something about that? They were trying to say that they were gonna roll out an HIV vaccine. They're going to roll it out because you know what? It's the way, you know, to yeah. it's the way to cut, you know, to yeah. cut the discussion. You know, yeah. they're going to do it. The same way they say they found something for cancer. You know what I mean? But we have never had more cancer cases because what the COVID does is if you have an underlying problem, yeah. it will go and attack this problem yeah. and it will bring it up to the surface. Yeah. And sometimes you do not know you have this underlying problem. Yeah. And you know what? You think it's normal? Do you realize in two months, in yeah. two months, 400 sports men and women have collapsed and died, uh, 400, and nobody's asking any questions about that. I am so sick and tired of the mass media yeah. just licking the bums of these government officials, and they're not yeah. asking the questions. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Ask the questions. It. You know what? When we were when we were sent to school, you know, we were sent to school. You know, that's why I tell you that our educational system is failing us. Yeah. 
the educational system, they are making soldiers. Mm -hmm. They are not making people who think and can question right. the yeah. system. You know what I mean? Yeah. You were supposed to work for the system, not question the system. Yeah. And we have a problem right there with the educational yeah. system. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think it's something that we should revisit. Yeah. Unfortunately, when I'm on television, that's not what they ask me. You know, you an American and you doing this for American broadcast, mm -hmm. for the American broadcast, the radio, you know, whatever, you know, they ask the questions. But in France, they don't ask me these questions. They ask me these superficial questions. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because that's, you know, in France, in, in the States, when you're a celebrity, you, you should be able to dance, to sing, to do this, to do that. Because you and you are supposed to be an entertainer. Yeah. But in France, it's different. In yeah. France, if you are a singer, you are supposed to sing. You should not yeah. be acting. Right. You know? If you're an actor, you cannot dance because you're an actor. If you're a dancer, you cannot act and sing. You know what I mean? It's very funny, but that's the way it is in France. You know? And I have always broken those barriers. I said, no, I am doing it the American way. You yeah. know what I mean? If yeah. I'm an entertainer, I should be able to. When, because the first... Um, the first edition of Dancing with Stars, which was not again called Dancing with Stars in France, I won it. Right. And oh I, my I'm God. Not a dancer. Yes. Oh my God. Did you just say you won it? The name of the program at the time was Celebrity Dancing. I won it, you know, and I won it. And we were there for months learning to dance. And you had to learn to dance, you know, the jive, you had to learn to disco, you had to learn. And I had to learn all of these different steps, you know what I mean? I had to learn to dance to rap music and, you know, to do like, you know, these Beyonce's and them had to do. I had to do it and I did it. You know what I mean? You never so cease think, to amaze me. You never cease to amaze me. He never yeah. ceases to amaze me. But, but you have it. Uh, just, just one second. Yeah, but you never cease. Yeah. To, I was saying you never cease to amaze me because you really are just the constant because, artist. You know, you, you, I'll tell you something, you know, um, you know, when you come from a third world country yeah. or a country that is considered poor, Yes. You were always hungry. Yeah. You were always hungry. So right. nothing scares you. Right. You all you're interested in is eating. Yeah. And eating and eating does not mean just for the stomach. I it know. Can be for I the brain. Metaphor. It can be for the heart, for the yeah. soul. It could be, you know, all of this is a way of feeding who you are. Mm. And if I meet someone that I feel is quite interesting, intellectual, because I'm greedy that way. Yes. You know what I mean? I love people that are intelligent. I learn from them, yes. you know? I think the biggest virus we are suffering from right now, yeah. it's not COVID, it's stupidity. Yeah, <laughs> you said that on your page. <laughs> yeah, you said that on your page, yes. It is stupidity, yeah. and you know what? The worst thing is, you know, and, and I've always said it, you know, stop making stupid people famous. Yes. <laughs> they keep doing it. <laughs> so for me, when I follow somebody that is as talented as Diane Carroll, You're like, okay, or like, as Sidney Poitier, or as Denzel Washington, or as Will Smith, you know what I mean? You know, there was a way, there was a there was there was glamour. There was elegance. There was something. They then, also, did you know, a right lot now of when I look at the young people, you know, you know, already is it, one beat and one verse, and listening to the one verse all the time. And you know what? They just feel it's because they have half of their pum pums out. You know, <laughs> I'm not interested in this. This is not a part of. That is not how I was brought up. You know. Yeah. And, yeah, that, that is not how I was brought up, you know. So because I was not brought up this way, you know, I don't add head to it, you know what I mean? They have the right to exist because they have their clientele, you know, but I am not a clientele for this, you know. I was brought up, um, I love Zara, you know what I mean? Because I don't have a problem with Zara, you know what I mean? But I have a problem with fast fashion that is really badly done. Yeah. I, in the conditions that they are done. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have a 
problem with that. From if I grew up in a very uh, unprivileged environment, I made, I created, you know, uh, I learned to sew. I learned to do things, or you can, I learned to sew. I learned to do it on my own. And I learned it in such a way that I don't have to depend on anybody. So me, when I was looking at Couture in the Vogue magazine, yes. I didn't have to go and get it at Zara. Right. I sat down by the machine and I did it myself. And it was, you know, that's what brought me to where I am today. Because I knew how to use the resources that I had to create something that would make somebody want, you know. So for me, I'm happy. I'm very happy, honestly. You know, if many people, you know, I've been asked or I've been told many times, if you had to redo something or if you have any regrets, I don't have regrets. Right. I really don't. And if I had to have a regret in my life, that that regret would be, you know, some of the people that I met and I wasted my time with them. Yes. I would have done it differently, you yeah. know, but then and again in life, good or bad, it's a lesson yeah. and you need to take some. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. Um, I was just getting ready to say, uh, I, you were one of the first people that congratulated me last night because, you know, I received my first piece of couture, couture. And I like, it's in the, it's in the mail from Spain and it's coming to me. And I just was like, and I like, literally, this I is just, so amazing. You do not know the kind of work and the craft that goes into Let me tell you something. Okay. I'm Everything is done by hand. hand. Let me tell you something. I do. And I had to stop from crying because I, I literally asked myself after I was done, who are you? Who do you think you are? Because you are really getting out here. And like, I'm like, but you're hey. worth it. Don't ask yourself that question. You are worth it. You know, tell yourself you are, you know. Even my grandma, my grandmother was just like, oh my God. Like, you know, like it, it was it because she's like, I've, I've been speaking about fashion for years. I was young, like 19. And to, to get here and have it not go the way I expected it to go, but even better, that's that whole God situation and God part. He made it. Yeah, better. but for, he made for a moment, yeah but, but for a moment you you had a little you had a little bout with modeling no yeah, yes I did just a little bite in Paris just a little bite but it was too stressful it was too stressful it, it triggered my uh my mania and my anxiety and my fears and and my friend um he's in Paris his name is Philippe and he said to me because I was like having panic attacks because I, I was like I need to do this I need to do this I need to be in front of this person I need to be and he was like you you what did he I gotta remember how he said it he said, you Americans, you work so hard, but you, you work to, I think it was you, you, you work to live and not live to work. Or, or I think it's, you live to work instead of work. Ah, yeah, that's what it is. You live to work instead of working to live. That's what he said. That's beautiful. Yes. That's what he told me. And, and honestly, he's still right. He was right. Cause I, I just, to this day, I just. Do you realize the amount of people that are just living? Yeah. They're just living, you know, they do not even know what they're living for. And me, <laughs> yeah. whatever I undertake, if I am not passionate by it, if I, if I do not like it, I don't do anything I don't like. I don't do something because I want to make money. Yeah. I do it because I love what I'm doing. Love you know, I take pleasure in it. And I also do something because I know it will bring some form of pleasure to yeah. someone else. Yes. Again, it's sharing. Yes, yes. Give me three words that inspire you. Three words that inspire you. Three words that inspire me. Um, I do not like intolerance. Mm -hmm. So I'm inspired, you know, mm -hmm. you know, where that is concerned. Um, sharing. Mm -hmm. for me is very important mm -hmm. and um anything of god yeah anything divine yeah those are good ones 
Thank you, thank you so much for talking to me. I, I heard your it was a pleasure. I heard your house attendance and I heard you tell them you can go now. <laughs> I heard you talking to your, your house attendants. I'm like, I got this man over here doing all kinds of stuff. They finally listened and like, what is he doing? <laughs> it's okay. But no, thank you so much. I can't wait for them to see this. I, I have to stop my coconut cake. Yes, yes, yes. Cake. yes. You grated the, you like, grated the coconut. So I broke the started. coconut in my flake, the coconut myself. You know what I mean? Right, right. Right, yeah. right. I take the coconut myself, you know, so so I had to go coconut cake. But don't worry, Nori. So get this. I'm gonna tell them where to find you. I'm gonna because I always say, I always say um pleasure speaking to you. Um I mean, you know. Listen, Hello. I had listen, it's Hello. always a pleasure talking to you. It's always you a may have a problem tagging my name. No problem, no problem. It is a pleasure talking to you. Let's make it something very, um, let's make a habit of it, I'd like to say. You know, this is quite interesting. Yeah. And if your viewers, they have a problem tagging, if you have a problem tagging me, you just go directly into my um, um, Instagram account, you know, and there are many fake accounts, but you know which one is the good account. I know which one is the real Actually, I'm wearing one of my crochet dresses in blue. Oh. As that, yes. Yes, that is one course. of my crochet it's dresses. Beautiful, it's the beautiful. The in blue, and I it's open it. in the front. Yes, that I is one. Of, that is one of the. That is one of the dresses from my collection. That's um, that's an avant premiere, an avant. But you know, but my you, collection. But you know what? You know? What I love it's not just no regular. It's it, it's crochet on steroids, honey, because it's amazing. It is crochet, a hundred percent. Yeah, six weeks worth. You know, wow. and I have the same hairstyle as you have right now. Wow. You know, so, Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, I remember that. That one's one of my favorites. I didn't even know the dress was crocheted. Yeah, it right. is a crocheted dress. See, you know? And see, that's the thing. See, I try to get people to understand, you know, being a lover of fashion, I try to get people to understand how important fashion really is. It, it, it's important to life. It's important to love. It's important to pre presentation because- but many people don't get it. No, they don't, they don't, they don't get that you can come from anywhere, start from the bottom and, and put on the, it's not even the fashion per se, it's putting on the right attire to get where you need to go. Yeah, but you know what? It's not even fashion. It's, you know what? It's the way you conduct yourself. Yes. Yes. It's the way you conduct yourself. It's art. Because you it's know so what? Hard. You can take the curtains, you yes. know, you can take the curtain yes. from the window. Yes. And you wrap it around you. Is the way you wrap it yes. and the way you conduct yourself. Because yes. you, you know what? What you are wearing does not mean that your heart is not black. Exactly. So you know what? You can dress the outside as yes. beautiful as you can. If yes. the heart is dark, the heart is dark. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the way it is, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's all about if you know how to conduct yourself, yeah. if you know how to respect others, you know what? The most beautiful. The most beautiful garment you can wear yes. is respect. Yes. 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 And if you don't respect yourself, how the hell do you expect yes. anyone to respect you? Yes. Yes. You always say that to me. Yes. You always say that. Thank you so much. I'm, you are I'm welcome, gonna baby doll. I'm going to no run. Problem. I'm going to run. Have a blessed Sunday. Hold on. And thank you for having me on the show. Hold um, on. Really? <laughs> Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard the vocal stylings of fashion icon and French celebrity, Vincent McDoom. There we go. <laughs> Thank you ever Goodbye. so much. Thank you to your public. Thank you to your, <laughs> to your followers, everybody, you know, watching the show. And talk to you soon. Okay, love? Yo, I love you. Mwah. Yes.